people who have witnessed a there's not going to be a wedding moment following a bachelor slash bachelorette party, what went down. Here is a more upbeat story, the night before their city hall wedding. The bride and groom had separate big parties, and got so wasted they both slept through the wedding. They didn't realize it until city hall called asking where they were, and they decided f it, we'll do it later. They did eventually get married, and still are as far as I know. Over 20 years later, the bride and groom had separate big parties, and got so wasted they both slept through the wedding. Fucking hell could you imagine the carnage, if only one of them had got that drunk? Their spouse would never forgive them. As it was, they probably took it as a sign, that they were made for each other, or at the very least, a good luck charm. Not at bachelor party, though my uncle got left at altar on his wedding day. 5 years relationship, my granddad had to go up on altar, thank everyone for coming, and say there would be no wedding. My uncle was heartbroken, and went on a trip to New Zealand. He sat on plane next to a dude from there. He invited him to his family's home, and my uncle ended up marrying his sister. They are still together, and have had 3 kids. She is awesome and all happy days. Eldest child 21 years. Best aunt. This would be an epic romantic comedy or romance movie in general. Start writing that script. Bachelor party in Vegas. Bachelor hooks up with a girl. Gives her his cell phone number, so they can continue the party that night. Bride to be is sitting at home with the iPad getting all of the iMessages from the girl. She cancelled the wedding that day, a couple years ago. I went to Vegas with my girlfriend at the time and a group of her friends. One of the other girls did the same thing. Her boyfriend was sitting at home using her iPad to watch a movie and saw all the messages. My GF at the time kept trying to say how we should try to cheer her up. And I was just like why. She got what she deserved honestly. Yeah f her. Cheer her up. Jesus. I bet she would. Hi there. Part time wedding planner here. I have a few of these. 1. Obligatory sax 1. The bachelor party and the bachelorette party were being held in the same hotel in New Orleans. I tried to get them to do separate venues but knew who. The group discount would cover an extra day in Carmel. They begin at 8pm and collide drunkenly at about 3am. It was some kind of drunken fist fight come orgy and everyone was so ashamed the next morning they called it off. Good news everyone. They made up 6 months later and got married. They picked something simple. Like their backyard this time. 2. Fucking weird sax 1. Bachelorette party turned out to be homestuck themed. Complete with homestuck male strippers. Please for the love of Christ do not ask where I found those. It got weird and the groom walked in on the bride riding a candy con colored horn. Groom nope the f out. 3. The best one. So the couple has been sleeping together for a few years. She gets pregnant and decide to get married. Months of planning go by, and she begins to show. Bride's parents would write the f out, call her a slut, and forbid her to get married. They cancel the wedding, steal her parents car to elope, and torch the garage on their way out. It was magnificent. I did not get paid. I like number 3. Friend of mine had a bachelor party at the local strip club two days before the wedding. I was going to come later in the evening as I was flying in late for the bachelor party and wedding. Got a call right before takeoff that the groom had fallen from the upstairs in the VIP section and they believed had severed his spinal cord. Turns out he had severed his spinal cord and after a few months of rehab was fully paraplegic. Amazingly the wedding did happen. Almost a year later, it puts things in perspective that she still stayed. I used to work at an upscale wedding venue. Two weeks before a huge, expensive wedding, the groom's father dies, so they ask us to turn the wedding into a funeral instead. They were a lovely couple, and it was really awfully sad when it happened, but I still use it as my go-to answer for describe a time when you delivered outstanding customer service type questions in job interviews. Sorry, slash, you're hired. I have a funeral plan for next week, hoping it will turn into a wedding. Who's the lucky corpse? They aren't a corpse. Yet. What happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. Except herpes. Several years ago, I got a phone call from the maid of honor for a wedding I was going to attend. As a guest. Two weeks hence. She was flustered. But managed to get out there's no wedding. Groom called it off. He's in love with someone else. 
Well, I didn't press. I was friends with both. So I knew that the full details would eventually make their way back to me. Oh, and boy did they. Turns out, a couple weeks before the wedding, groom called bride and said he was coming over. They needed to talk. When he got to her apartment, he broke down in tears and confessed that he was in love with someone else. He loved her, but couldn't marry her because he didn't love her in the way a bride deserves. There was much crying and shouting over it all. But eventually the bride recovered from the news enough to ask him who he was in love with. Well, groom said, it's bride's brother. The wedding was definitely off at that point. Now, five or six years later, groom and bride's brother are married and happy. Though, I lost contact with bride shortly after her wedding plans went tits up. So I'm not sure if she ever forgave the boys for that one. Well it's a shame it got that far. But it's best for everyone that he figured that out before the wedding. Not bachelor party related, but close. Girl was set to marry guy. The week leading up to the wedding, guy gets busted in a child prostitution ring. He said he didn't know she was underage and that he was under a lot of stress due to the wedding. Girl. Didn't buy the BS. Needless to say, wedding was off. After the wedding at the reception, the new Liwats took forever to show up. They were nearly an hour late. When they did arrive they were arguing loudly the entire time. They got introduced and we all clapped as per tradition and they sat down at the main table in a half. Sometime between the appetizer and the main course the argument started again. The groom stormed off and my girlfriend and I were nosy so we went to see what was up. He ended up in the hotel lobby on his cell phone. We thought nothing of it and we were about to go back when the wife shows up still obviously in her wedding dress and continues to ream him out. Now for the first time. We can hear what the argument is about. He had invited his ex to the wedding. She showed up to the ceremony and that threw the bride off. Apparently also. He had cheated on the new wife with the ex-girlfriend several times with the last time being only about a month prior to the wedding. Additionally. The ex slash girlfriend slash mistress was on her way to come pick up the new husband to take him away from the new bride. Cause she was acting crazy. According to the groom. After a couple minutes of watching this train wreck of an argument. A shitty rust bucket sedan shows up with the ex girlfriend in it. The groom gets into the car with his ex. Or whatever the f she is. And they drive off. Last words went to the bride though who screamed at him as he tore off. Well I guess I'm going to go back to f I'm your brother then you are soul. So oh. They are no longer married now. My cousin runs a popular upscale marriage venue and always tells the story way better than this so here is a rough overview. The groom's mom was a heavy drinker and got belligerent when she drank so understandably the bride wanted the groom to try to limit her drinking. The afternoon before the wedding the bride arrives to see groom's mom smashed with the groom himself giving her beers. Next thing my cousin knows. She was there to oversee preparations. The bride and groom are in a straight up fist fight which leads to an anchorman style street fight between members of both families in the parking lot. Apparently they recently scheduled a new day for it. I can't imagine the tension there. I used to be a photographer. The first wedding I shot was one where the mother of the bride was a heavy drinker. At the reception she was pretty drunk and went up to give a speech. She started out with, when my daughter told me she was getting married. I knew it was to one of two guys. And I'm glad it's you John. John was not pleased. That's why you only ask the same. Boring people to give a speech. When my uncle married he didn't let his mom give a speech. Because she says inappropriate shit and doesn't care. He didn't let his dad give a speech because 1. He's an idiot. 2. He knew he'd be drunk by then. And 3. It's impossible to make him shut up once he starts talking. So he asked my mom to give a speech. It wasn't super original, modern, cool, edgy, yada yada yada. But it was cute and people didn't end up punching each other. So it's a win. Buddy of mine got married recently and we, the groomsman, had to keep the microphone away from his dad the entire time. We kept distracting him with more liquor. God bless you. You've earned your way to heaven. My granddad didn't try to speak. But when he tried to pester us, we just refilled his glass. Here. Grandpa. They brought more whiskey. Worked 100% of the time. Friend invites me to his wedding. He and fiance are fairly poor. Have lived together 4 years. They are both semi-disabled 
his is PTSD, hers is physical, and on fixed incomes, and live in a somewhat expensive area. They have three gift registries, Target, Masses, Crate and Barrel, and a huge invite list, over 300 friends slash family members. All the stuff on the registries is standard stuff like towels, coffee cups, flatware, etc. Anyway, people fly out, get ready for wedding. Two days before wedding is bachelor party and friend gets drunk and admits that she's not really his fiance. They are just roommates and they have no intention of getting married they just needed the stuff. They're going to cancel the wedding tomorrow and keep all the gifts. Had to protect him from getting his a kicked by about two dozen people. Then had to have the fiance come clean to everyone since he was too hungover. They ended up returning most of the gifts to people, but a surprising number of people let them keep the gifts. As his grandfather said, if you needed these things that badly to lie like this, you must have been very desperate. Apostrophe. There's a story that goes around. I can't vouch for the truth of it or not. Call it an urban legend. First of all, if you've never been to a Jewish wedding, the way it goes is. First they have the reception, with the bride and groom in separate rooms. Then the ceremony. Then family goes away to sit for pictures, while the guests sit down to eat. Then the bride and groom come in, and the dancing starts. In between the ceremony and the pictures. Though, is what's called yichud which doesn't really translate. But it approximately means isolation together. The bride and groom lock themselves in a room, and are observed by two reliable witnesses outside the door to have stayed there in long enough to have consummated the marriage, although nobody actually does it there, it's considered deckless. This is what actually solemnizes the marriage. Well, one of three things, the other two are signing a marriage contract, called a ketubab, and transfer of a piece of chattel property, traditionally a ring, though it can be other things, from the groom to the bride. So, after the yichud, the bride comes out and announces, sorry everyone, the wedding's off. We'll be getting a divorce, and we are returning all the gifts, except for the bedroom set, where I caught my new husband trying it out with my sister last week. So, there are far worse stories here in this very thread. What makes this one noteworthy? Well, think about this. She knew about the episode before the wedding. Why'd she go through with it? Because under Jewish law, if you've once been married to a woman, even after divorcing her you aren't allowed to marry her sister at any time, until your first wife has died. By going through with the ceremony, she in effect, locked her sister out of ever being able to get together with her soon to be ex. As someone with a decent amount of orthodox friends. That's fucking hilarious. She's definitely gonna be able to get a get, while also throwing a huge middle finger at the sister. I don't know, if they are that orthodox, he has to consent to the get. Otherwise it doesn't happen, and if he's pissed off enough, he can just refuse it, and children she has, with another man, will be bastards. According to Jewish law, he can't get married either though, although there have been many incidents of husbands being encouraged to grant a get, either through her relatives bribing him, or just beating the shit out of him. Paramedic. Backler party mixed with drunk driving. One of the groomsmen killed. Believe the entire wedding was cancelled, and the couple split up. Conversely I recently worked a wedding, where a groomsman and a bridesmaid were killed in a car accident the night before the wedding after the rehearsal dinner. The wedding went ahead as planned. Edit, the two that died, may have been a bit intoxicated, but that wasn't the reason they got in an accident. They were pulling onto a major road at a blind spot that has been known to cause accidents. And since they were from out of town they obviously had no idea it was a dangerous intersection. The management told us all the deal, as soon as we walked in, so that we would all be extra careful and sensitive to the issue. But honestly if you didn't know what had happened, you wouldn't have ever guessed, based on the vibe of the wedding. Mostly people were pretty happy like a normal wedding. Although at one point the groom was weeping in front of my bar. I felt so bad for him, that I almost started crying too. Poor guy lost one of his best friends the day before his wedding. That sounds like an incredibly depressing event. As someone who decided to still have my wedding, after losing my two nieces, flower girls, and nephew, Usher, the week before my wedding I can honestly say it felt very normal. 
It wasn't easy to switch from funeral to wedding mode, but once in the swing of things the wedding was a much welcome break from reality, where everyone got to drink, dance, and forget how sad they were. When bad things happen sometimes the best thing for everyone is a little distraction. One of my best friend's wedding was cancelled when he learned she slept with a stripper after her bachelorette party. Like 3 days after. He is happily remarried now with a kid. Worst part was that it was a destination wedding slash honeymoon and he couldn't get a refund. So we all went anyway and he was super depressed the whole time. His family was all there too. I had a buddy that happened to also. True story. He ended up banging one of his fiance's friends as revenge. Which she knew about, but they just let bygones be bygones. And they still got married. I for an eye I guess. And it worked out. They've been married for 8 years. But we never talk about it. The marriage or the vengeful shagging. Buddy of mine went out night before wedding. Crashed his car and died. They dated for like 5 years in the morning of the wedding. He was dead. This thread is substantially more depressing than I bargained for. Sorry for your loss. While the working the night before a wedding at a hotel, the staff and I heard a loud scream from upstairs. Cue the bride screaming and sobbing shouting the wedding's off, while storming out the place followed by the groom stark bollock naked covering his leather regions with his hands apologizing profusely. Turns out she caught the mother of the bride and the groom shagging. Safe to say we had an easy shift the next day as we didn't have a wedding to cater for. I just wanted to see what you'd be like in 20 years. Neighbor's friend's jealous harpy frenum is convinced her to cheat on the husband to be at the bachelorette party. Her friends were very drunk and snapchatted evidence to him as a joke. Obviously. He didn't take it that well and left her. Packed up all his things in their apartment and drove to his parents instead of getting married. Bride apparently didn't leave her room for about 3 weeks. Totally distraught with how her relationship fell apart. Fast forward 6 months later. The two are talking again. Not sure if they are trying to make things work. Best friend's bachelor party a few years ago. He had dated his fiance for 6 or 7 years at that point. She made a male friend at work that became a groomsman. I hated him. Didn't trust him. And told my buddy that. The night of the party after huge amounts of alcohol the groom breaks down crying. Leaves and walks home. Didn't say anything to anyone. Just left. Found out the next day that the bride-to-be had been banging the piece of shit groomsman for months and they were trying to work through it. He couldn't get past it and cancelled the wedding. Sounds more like she was trying to work through his self-respect until he shut up about it just let it happen. Seriously. You don't get to ask for someone you screwed to be in the party. If your so knows about a past thing. And they suggest it. Cool. Otherwise they're left out if they're really a friend. They'll get it. But recently? Come on. In the early 90s my friend's brother was getting married. The night before the groom and best man decided they should kill the ex-boyfriend of the bride. They did. They got caught. And the wedding was cancelled. For obvious reasons. As far as I know. The two are still serving time. That. Was not the ending I expected. A week before his wedding a friend of mine walked in on his dad having sex with his fiancé. The next day in a fit of rage he trashed their room, and in the process, found explicit love letters between his recently married best friend and best man in her underwear drawer. The letters were as recent as the past week. The wedding was cancelled. Whenever I ran into him at a bar I made sure he never had to buy his own drinks. Edit 1 points of clarification. My friend Bob caught his fiancé having sex with his dad Bob Sr. Bob then found love letters in his bedroom he shared with his fiancé between his fiancé and his best friend slash best man Steve. This happened around 2001 when people still hand wrote things. The letters were explicit enough that it was obvious that Bob's fiancé and Steve had been having sex within the past week. I realize I used way too many pronouns in my original explanation and some people were a little confused. Edit to changed fiancé to the correct and gender specific. Fiancé. Sorry about that. Wait so she cheated with both his dad and his best friend? Yes. Unless his dad was sleeping with the best friend. Somehow this one doesn't feel quite as bad. Just a little weirder. Groom's ex just happened to be at the bar where we were having drinks. They hooked up. No wedding later. Edit. Changed words for clarity. Someone successfully pulled a cat eye on him 